Verse 66, he says, While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the servant girls of the high priest came by. And when she saw Peter warming himself, she looked closely at him. You also were with the Nazarene, Jesus, she said. But he denied it. I don't know or understand what you're talking about, he said, and went out into the entryway. When the servant girl saw him there, she said again to those standing around, This fellow is one of them. Again, he denied it. After a little while, those standing near said to Peter, Surely you are one of them, for you are a Galilean. He began to call down curses on himself. And he swore to them, I don't know this man you're talking about. Immediately, the rooster crowed the second time. And Peter remembered the words Jesus that spoke to him. Before the rooster crows twice, you will disown me three, three times. And he broke down and wept. This is probably one of the most familiar stories in the Gospels. Strangely enough, it is in all four of the Gospels. Peter disowning Jesus three times. And the thing about the roosters, I were kind of fascinated with whether the rooster crowed once or whether the rooster crowed twice. Do you know anything about roosters? I tell you, wanna, you want to lose every friend that you have? Get a rooster. Get a rooster. <laughs> roosters. We remember the rooster. We have it on the front of our ball. The point is, this stuff is happening at night. We talked about the trial of Jesus last week. We talked about how they broke every rule they had. And they were meeting at night. And Peter, you guys remember Peter? Do you remember how much Peter, how, how much fun Peter's been in the book of Mark? Yeah, Peter's the one that's always putting his foot in his mouth. Peter's the one that's always showing us that they just don't get what Jesus is talking about. Peter is the one that you look at and you shake your head. Peter is the one that cut off the ear of the man when he came to arrest Jesus. Peter followed him at a distance. He's out there. Peter's been told. Matter of fact, he told Jesus, I will never forsake you. I will never, I will never leave. And Jesus said, I got news for you. You're going to do that tonight before the rooster crows. And he did it. He did it. He ran into a very intimidating person. The servant girl. How intimidated can you be by the servant girl? Twice he united there. And then his accent gave him away. Which tells you something. Peter was talking. Peter usually talks a lot. He answers when Jesus doesn't ask questions. And his accent gives him away. And he denies it again and he, he swears. I don't know this man. And the mark says the rooster crowed. Luke tells us something different. I'm thankful for Luke. I, we've been studying Luke on Sunday morning. Luke is more of a Western thinker. And he said that third time when he denied that Jesus turned and looked at Peter. And he looked at Jesus in the face. And he broke down and he wept. This is the low point. The low point in Peter's life. Jesus told him it was going to happen. Everything Jesus has said is going to happen has happened so far or is in the process of happening. And why is Peter so Because he still hasn't owned up to his sinful nature. We've talked about that before. What 
does it take to make a person like that cry? What's it take to make you cry? Oh, some sentimental stories. Maybe something Reader's Digest, you cry. What about this kind of crime? <laughs> this kind of crime. Turn your Bibles with me over to 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 6. Keep your fingers in the mark. We're going to come back. 2 Corinthians chapter 6. Paul has written a letter to him. I'm sorry, we're in chapter 7. Let's go to chapter 7. And in the letter, he said he caused him sorrow. So we're looking at verse um, 8. He says, Even if I caused you sorrow by my letter, I do not regret it. Though I did regret it, I see that my letter hurts you, but only for a little while. Yet now I'm happy, not because you were made sorry, but because your sorrow led you to repentance. For you became sorrowful as God intended, and so were not harmed in any way by us. Godly sorrow brings repentance that leads to salvation and leaves no regret. But worldly sorrow brings death. See what this godly sorrow has produced in you? What earnestness, what eagerness to clear yourself, what indignation, what alarm, what affection, what concern, what readiness to see justice done? Godly sorrow. Godly sorrow produces repentance. Remember what that word means? It means change. You're going this way, you repent, you turn around, you go this way. He said, and see what it's produced in you. Earnestness. Readiness to see justice done. Concern. This stuff that godly sorrow has produced in you. This is the kind of sorrow we're talking about in Peter's life. Did it come because he messed up? Peter's messed up a lot, hasn't he? Or did it come because of something he saw in Jesus' face? Do you think he saw disapproval? Do you think he saw disdain? Do you think he saw, I told you so, Peter, and you still didn't listen to me? Do you think that's what he saw in Jesus' face? No, what he saw was love. Yeah, Jesus knew it was going to happen. That's one of those godly mysteries that we won't know about until we get to talk to him. He knew it was going to happen. He knew Peter was going to mess up. And he loved him anyway. That's what caused Peter to break down and to cry. Have you ever had that experience? Maybe you faced up to some of your sinful nature. Maybe a little bit of it. Maybe you say, yeah, sometimes I mess up. Sometimes I make some mistakes. Sometimes I say things I shouldn't. Sometimes I don't say things I should. But you know, I do my best. I try, and I get up, and I brush myself up, <coughs> and I pull myself up by my bootstraps, and I say, I'm going to keep going, and people encourage me and say, that away, get back up there, get in there, get back in the saddle. That's not going to produce the godly sorrow that leads to salvation. No, it's when you look into the face of Jesus 